Well, the basketball gang is all here, so we're here to talk in pre- Tuesday's matchups locked on Blue Devils host J.J. Jackson is in the building. We're going to get ready for what should be an exciting Tuesday for men's hoops. Want to get you prepared. We're going to talk about some of the games past and what we can look forward to in these matchups. Will guys kind of conquer and get over some of these tough losses or will they continue this win streak? Let's do it. On ACC, your daily podcast on the Atlantic Coast Conference, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. What's going on, everybody? Welcome to today's edition of Locked On ACC. Super excited to have you, ready to rock and roll. J.J. Jackson, Locked On Blue Devils, as I mentioned, is in the building, ready to go over some hoop talk. I got my expert here. I'm ready to go. Now, today's episode is brought to you by Sonos. Experience the game like never before with Sonos Arc, the premium start soundboard, smart soundboard for TV, movies, music, gaming, and more. Visit Sonos.com to learn more. J.J., Happy New Year, my friend. Happy New Year, Candace! Excited to chat with you for the first time here in 2022. Yeah. Uh, more fun basketball games to be talking about. So I'm doing well and excited to have another year with you here on Locked On ACC. No doubt about it. We know that 2021 was quite interesting and hopefully 2022 won't be more of the same. And then we certainly can talk about some of these basketball teams here on the men's side as they prepare for some Tuesday matchups tonight. We're going to start out first with FSU and Wake Forest, a Wake Forest team that in 2021 and 2020, we were saying, okay, more of the same, still figuring out who they are, but they certainly have come in sitting at 11 and three and are ready to take charge. They are currently a favorite to beat FSU. We all knew that was going to happen, right? Coast of course, with Coach Leonard Hamilton and Steve Forbes, we already had the Demon Deacons going to blow them out. But might not be the case. Florida State coming off a win against NC State. They're feeling themselves. They're feeling like they have a great opportunity here before them. So I would love to talk to you just more so about this matchup and how excited you are for these games. Yeah, it's going to be a good Tuesday slate of games coming up tonight. And this is certainly one of them between Florida State and Wake Forest. Wake Forest being the home team in this, as you mentioned. In Vegas right now, the Demon Dinkins are favored by two or three points in this contest. So really close. And then the ESPN Basketball Power Index is giving Wake Forest a 62.9% chance to win this game. I never would have thought that would have been the case (laughs) going into the year, right? Like I did think Steve Forbes was going to start to change some things there in Winston-Salem and make Wake Forest a more competitive basketball program again. He's certainly done that. And I don't think it's necessarily a knock on what Wake Forest has been. I think it's more so that I thought Florida State was going to be more dominant, was going to be a better team thus far this season. And getting a good win this past weekend against NC State, led by Malik Osborne, was impressive. But really, the story right now has been the play of Wake Forest. And I think Mm -hmm. Wake Forest can well win this basketball game. Yeah, I totally agree here. I think Alondez Williams has certainly been a guy that we can't, you know, not look at. And then when you look at Florida State's team being young, we're used to the depth of Coach Hamilton and company, but we're also used to having the depth where you have more guys running. They're in that game, and they make you they make you pay for all of the time that they get to sit on the bench and regroup and reload. That hasn't necessarily been the case. And then you look at Bigs and how they're not able to, you know, facilitate this or not be able to get those shots on the inside as they're used to. So I'm thinking, okay. Seminoles, should we be worried? You're the new blood. We always knew that you guys would come in and maybe take over, but not in this sense. They're also the previous, previous ACC champions. And so I know they're fighting for that opportunity to get like a legit ACC championship title. I don't necessarily know that this is the year though. No, and and, and we'll see. We'll see if, if this turns out to be the year. But I tell you what, through uh, the first, what is it, two or three months of the season thus far, you got to be a little impressed, that's for sure. Absolutely. Then let's talk about NC State, the team that we had just mentioned, Kim, coming off the loss against Florida State, 83-81. They'll be playing Virginia Tech at 7 p.m. on the ACC Network, and the Hokies are certainly a team that at times you're like, okay, this is the dominant team we've been hoping for. And other times you're like, okay, I thought we had matured, got a little bit better, maybe not. Not so much. Their game against Pittsburgh was postponed, but they're looking to have their first New Year's game coming up with a W. How do you see this game going? Yeah, an NC State and Virginia Tech game that should be a good one with Virginia Tech being the home team. Looked like for a moment they were going to be able to beat the Duke Blue Devils. 
uh, winning by four at halftime. They led by as many as eight early in the second half, but then Duke figured out that, you know, we're one of the best teams in all of college basketball. Maybe we should turn on the switch a little bit <laughs> and move forward. Pittsburgh's yeah. not good, so that would have been a win for Virginia Tech to start the year. This is going to be more competitive, though. I have to wonder if NC State is going to be upset at how the Florida State game ended because they did get such a great performance from somebody like Darian Seaborn who's been their leader so far this year. If they're going to be a little extra motivated, you've got to be able to hit down shots from outside when you go on the road in the ACC. I don't know that NC State can get this done, though. So I actually do think that Kive Aluma leads the way for Virginia Tech, and they find a way to win the game tonight. You know, I would hope that a team that is currently 7-7 in the NC State Wolfpack would be pissed off enough to where they've been in so many games when they were then that Purdue matchup. They were in the Louisville game. They were in, uh, excuse me, they were in the Florida State matchup. You would hope that you would just find a way to squeak it out. And I think that's been the biggest difficulty. Can they finish? And having young guys who are fast, but sometimes they are still getting their sea legs underneath them, I think that's going to be the biggest question. Is Coach Heats able to kind of coach, coach up? You know, we always talk about teams who want to play play underdog. And to me, I can't tell what this team's identity is, right? Are they the kids that are pissed off? They want everyone sleeping on them because the Dukes and the Carolinas of the world are so great or even halfway decent over there in Chapel Hill. Or is it a team that, like, they know they're going to be all right and maybe we'll get a hot night, maybe you'll get an off night as they currently sit, you know, in that 500 range. You never – I just never can tell what we're going to get out of the – NC State. And I think there are opportunities where they've let slip by them, but I don't know if they can handle getting into a deep hole and trying to bring themselves out of it and trying to make a tournament run long term. And they've got to figure that out, though. I mean, this is this is the time you're jumping. That, that's the great thing about the start of the new year. You know, yeah. New Year's resolutions that you want to talk. <laughs> we could talk about those in basketball still, Candace, right? Because you've still got a lot to play for. You can turn around sort of the uh, the, the the narrative about your basketball team as March Madness nears. Because as we sit right now again here on January 4th, 2022, Candace Cooper, the Duke Blue Devils are the only team in the ACC ranked. Like this still <laughs> remains a problem in the conference, but that goes to show that it's so wide open for a number of these teams to go and make statements. So if you're a team like NC State going into a game like this versus Virginia Tech and other teams sort of in this area, wake up. You still have a lot to play for. It's still early in conference season. No doubt. This is my time to always plug the women when I say there's six women's teams who are currently ranked. So all the people that don't take time to go watch some women's hoops, you're doing yourself a disservice, especially in this conference. We're going to talk about the Georgia Tech and Duke matchup here in just a second. I want to remind you guys that if you are really into your ACC squads, I want you to make sure that you download the incredible app GetUp that has Get Upside app who has everyone ready to buy gas who absolutely needs it. My listeners are making up to 25 cents for every gallon of gas every time they fill up. Just download the free Get Upside app in the App Store or Google Play. Use promo code SCORE for college. And if you are into, again, any ACC school, you can get a 25 cents per gallon on your fill up, and that's up to 50 cents cash back. Don't pay full price at the pump anymore. Again, use S-C-O-R-E as the promo code to get 50 cents per gallon back on your first tank. Some people who drive a lot are making as much as two to three hundred dollars a month in cash back, and there's no catch. The cash get back gets added right to your account. You can cash out anytime to your bank account, PayPal, or e-gift card for Amazon and other brands. Again, that's the Get Upside app, which is free using promo code S-C-O-R-E. That's SCORE. And once you are finished there, make sure you guys hit up Bet Online because it has, it has you covered this holiday season, this New Year season, as you're trying to get ready for what should be a very exciting ACC uh, conference play when it comes to men's and women's hoops. Bet Online remains your number one sport, number one source for sports action this season. I am hitting these today, boy. Go to betonline.ag, head to their website, use your mobile device, or sign up today and receive a 50% welcome bonus on your first deposit by using promo code locked on to receive your bonus. Bet Online, fastest and easiest way to bet on all sports. Go to betonline.ag where the game starts. 
Candace Cooper and JJ Jackson here, Locked on Blue Devils podcast. And of course, we got to go into the Blue Devils who are finally getting to see some ACC action after some COVID postponement. After we had waited so long to see them play some ACC games, we're finally getting an opportunity as they play Georgia Tech, a Georgia Tech team that, you know, defending ACC champs, not necessarily playing like ACC champs right now, but it's all good. 9 p.m. on ACC Network. How are you feeling about the Blue Devils tonight, JJ? Uh I'm certainly going to be watching, Candace. I've I've missed Duke basketball. Excited to have it for the first time here in 2022. It's a Duke team that's favored by over 15 points against Georgia Tech. So as you said, they should have no problems. They're back playing at home inside Cameron Indoor Stadium, which now that the crazies are back, it's more mm -hmm. of a factor, more of an environment for this Duke team. Uh, Duke played Georgia Tech a year ago, one of the last games of the season before they got into the ACC tournament. Again, a Duke team that did not ultimately make the NCAA tournament and lost in overtime to Jose Alvarado and Moses Wright. Those two guys had career days versus yeah. the Blue Devils. Duke remembers that. I promise you a lot of these guys on the team <laughs> still remember the outcome of that because it was a Duke team that had a lot of players come back, whether it be Wendell Moore Jr. or Jeremy Roach or Mark Williams. A lot of those leaders are going to remember that game. They want to get that taste out of their mouth, and they want to be able to beat Georgia Tech. And, oh, yeah, they had two games postponed. Like, they just miss hooping, Candace. Yeah. So they're yeah. excited to get back out there, I'm sure. No doubt. And of course, you know, I have to ask you because it's always great when we have the experts here. Coach K's final season. Yeah. This is not going off to the greatest start here. This is yeah. not the ideal start for my guy. Out, outside noise, certainly. I, I think yeah. in terms of the results on the floor, it's been fine, right? You've mm -hmm. only had the one loss to Ohio State. That was the only hiccup in your record. You've already had two incredible wins with the entire world watching the season versus Kentucky and Gonzaga. You had the grandson getting the DUI with Palo involved. Like a lot of the outside stuff hasn't been great. Sure. And then factoring in COVID, I did like Coach K met with the media yesterday and talked about the fact he really wants to make sure that fans stay inside Cameron Indoor Stadium because right now Duke is one of the only schools in all of college basketball that requires a vaccination card or a negative test result within the past 48 hours to even get into a game, right? And so they're yeah. already being so forward thinking and making sure they are safe and they do understand the value of having fans. Because the last thing that I want as a Duke guy, and I would hope the last thing that college basketball fans, including Tar Heel people out there, yeah. would want is for Coach K's final season to not feature fans back inside Cameron Indoor Stadium towards the back half. So in terms of what Duke is doing on the floor, Coach K has to be really pleased, Candace. Duke is one of the best teams in the entire country, and as bad as the rest of the ACC looks right now, they may be marching their way pretty easy to an ACC championship, right? Yeah. I feel bad. I feel like I need to knock on all kinds of wood from jinxing myself through all this. But in terms of the outside noise, certainly it hasn't been the greatest to start the year for Duke. Yeah, no doubt. And I, I completely agree when you say on the floor, it's definitely been something that we have to tip our hat at because they have clearly shown why they are one of the more dominant teams here in the nation. But I also feel like, you know, coming off of COVID and not being in uh, shape, endurance shape, it's, it's going to be telling to see how they kind of uh, matriculate as the season progresses. And we already know Paolo has those issues with the cramps and all that right. good stuff. So hopefully they can just stay healthy and be the team that everyone expects them to be because it's kind of like we talk about Clemson, right? I talked about them. Hell, they're the only ones, one of the only ones who won a bowl game. They got a lot on their shoulders in terms of having the conference do well. So, like, all the pressure is on Duke to perform at the highest level because we can't guarantee anybody else is going to step up their game. That's a funny similarity you're making between trying to hold the mantle for bowl games and football, and then it's like, all right, we only got one basketball team <laughs> yeah, that's worth anything right now that's in the top 25. So, yeah, Duke's got to for sure be able to do that. Yeah, I'm telling no you, men, men's sports, I don't know what you guys got going on, but clearly the women are trying to do collectively Wake hold up. us up. Yeah. Okay? Okay. <laughs> exactly. Coach Kara Lawson and her seasons, they're holding it down, right? I think it's just very telling. But I'm excited sure. to see – the Duke Blue Devils get in action again at 9 p.m. on ACC Network tonight. And then you have Virginia and Clemson, a Virginia team coming off of a big win, right, beating Syracuse and Clemson, a team that's still figuring out their way. Of course, they're always going to be in games, but at times sometimes it can get away from them. They had the Duke game postponed, and they had just come off the win against Virginia back in December 22nd, and now they have this rematch here. Do you th see things going differently now that Virginia has a little more confidence going into this game? I mean, Candace, here we are in a situation 
where Duke only has one game played right now, right? Mm -hmm. They've only been able to get one ACC game played with a couple of postponements. And you're asking me already on January 4th, 2022, about a rematch of two ACC teams because Clemson and Virginia Tech have already (laughs) played one another. And the fact that Clemson went on the road to Charlottesville and won by 17, my oh my, right? Like they had lost 11 straight games to Virginia before that game was played at the end of December. And now they've got a chance to sweep them at home in Little John. Like, yeah, you got to feel pretty good about what you're going to get out of Clemson tonight now that they're at home. And, yeah, it's crazy. We're already seeing two teams play each other for the second time in the ACC. And there are schools out there that have only played one league game, period. Right. Cheers to hoping that they can figure it out quickly in terms of making up some of these games and if they'll be able to get them in. I think it's going to be very telling about how they kind of figure it out, especially for a Duke team that you kind of know is already the better team. So it doesn't help <laughs> that they already have yeah. the advantage of just being better, but they're not going right. to get to play maybe necessarily all of their matchups ahead of them. So that'll be a good <laughs> game. The Cavs going into the Tigers stadium playing 9 p.m. on ACC Network Extra as well. We can't say anything more than that's a pretty good slate of basketball games, if you ask me. A lot of good teams who are looking to find their way, their middle of the road. But if there's a lot of teams that are having good records on paper but don't necessarily step up when it comes to conference play. So that's why you play the game. I think that's what makes it fun about college hoops. We're at the best time of the year, right? I mean, we're at the point mm-hmm. of this season where all we've got now is ACC versus ACC games. Wednesday, tomorrow, we're going to have – another night uh, uh, of three ACC games being played. I know I do the Duke podcast here with the Locked On Podcast Network, so I'm always engaged with what's going on with the North Carolina Tar Heels. That's just (laughs) been my life, as you well know, Candace, growing up in the state. You know what's going on with both teams, whether you love them or hate them. What a win for North Carolina even over the weekend versus Boston College. Uh, So, yeah, I'm fired up, Candace. I'm excited to watch a lot of this ACC basketball this week. No doubt. We're going to talk a little bit about these Wednesday matchups after I remind you guys that if you are ready to get the putt to win the tournament, don't make make sure that you don't sink it because the championship is yours. But let's talk about the fact that on your backswing, your hat falls over your eyes. Is this how you're running your business? Poor visibility because you're still relying on spreadsheets and outdated finance software to see the full picture. Over 28,000 businesses already use NetSuite. For their New Year deal, get the NetSuite new financing program for those ready to upgrade at NetSuite.com slash L-O-C-K-E-D. That's locked. Head to NetSuite.com slash locked for this special one-of-a-kind financing offer on the number one financial system for growing businesses. Again, NetSuite.com slash L-O-C-K-E-D. NetSuite is the number one cloud financial system to power your growth. All right, wrapping up the show here with J.J. Jackson of Locked On Blue Devils. And, of course, we have some Wednesday matchups that we'd be remiss if we did not mention. We got Pittsburgh playing Louisville at 7 p.m. on ESPN. You tomorrow, and of course, Louisville is coming. They're on a hot streak. They're on a roll when it comes to ACC. Pittsburgh is finding its way. Man, 5-8 and are in the season. We already talked about Coach Capel, and this could be the last go of it. But, you know, I still think when you play the ACC, you always got to play your best because you know the competition is there. Louisville could get caught slipping. That's just a matter of fact here when it comes to what we got going on in the conference. Yeah, no, it's been fun to watch Louisville play so far this season. They should have no problems with uh, Pittsburgh when they play tomorrow night yeah. in that one. Uh, being led this year by by the play of Noah Locke, who's a Florida transfer. He's been doing a good job at that point guard spot for Louisville. But, uh, yeah, shout out to Coach Capel, obviously a, a Duke basketball alum, a former associate head coach of the Duke Blue Devils. I thought it would be better for him so far at Pittsburgh. Mm-hmm. But, uh, mm-hmm. boy, this year has been tough to watch with some of those losses that they've had. But then they've also been competitive. In yeah. some games, right? I mean, they only <laughs> lose by one to Notre Dame, uh, which was a tough one. And we already mentioned their game versus Virginia Tech being postponed. So I, I said it earlier about trying to get some teams ranked and, and knowing that there's still a lot to play for. There's a lot left to play for. You still Absolutely. have a lot of basketball games that need to be played. And maybe this Pittsburgh team is going to start to come into their own. Who knows? No doubt. Syracuse coming off a loss against Virginia will play Miami, a team that's red hot right now, sitting at 11 and three. Coach is definitely having them roll as they play at eight o'clock on the ACC network. And I'm not sleeping on Miami. I think many years past, you know, they've always been a team that can be a little scruffy. You just don't know what you're going to get on many nights. They can be red hot on other nights. They can be like, where are they? So I think the Hurricanes are definitely trying to put themselves in the conversation as well. So similar to Wake Forest. 
Yeah, no, this this Miami team's been fun to watch. So they're three and zero on the season so far, tied with Louisville for the league lead, and led this year by Cameron Mcgusty. Uh, what a fun story he's been. Duke's going to see Miami a little bit later this week on Saturday when Miami comes to play Cameron Indoor Stadium. Cameron Mcgusty, one of the top scorers in all of the conference. This guy, Candace, plays his freshman season at Oklahoma. He's a backup to Trey Young, who's now you know doing great things. Is already an NBA All Star and being shouted out in every Migo song that's been released, right? <laughs> and so now Cameron Mcgusty has to find a new home, and now he's getting his shine at Miami. He's been a lot of fun to watch, and I think that uh, Miami will beat Syracuse later this week. No doubt. I trail the gang. A little disappointing yeah. for the Bayheim brothers, though, right? Because I think we certainly had our eyes set on them having you know stellar performances. But this could be right on time for Bayheim boys because I think they love to get hot towards the end of the season. They love to make strong tournament runs. So maybe they're just getting everyone. And don't, don't get in the hurry. Scurry if you are a Syracuse fan. Just know we're right on time, maybe, when it comes to those orange men. Yeah, this was such a spe- making for such a special year, and I don't want to all of a sudden start knocking Syracuse because I'll be honest, I haven't watched them in as many games as others. Certainly had my eye on them in a couple of moments, but the fact that you do have both Bayheim brothers there, the fact that Jim is still coaching the team and knowing that they've also got several other talented players. Joe Girard is a name that we've heard in ACC play for a number of years now at this point. You would have thought that they would have been better because early in the season – I was saying, watch out for the Syracuse team. They're really impressive so far. And then they go and lose clunkers. Like they, <laughs> you know, like they just did not play well at home versus Virginia, a team that had just lost by 17 points to Clemson. That's what's so confusing yeah. about the ACC this year is that, you know, you always say anybody can beat anybody on any night, yada, 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 whatever. <laughs> We've heard that. But it truly is the motto this year yeah. that any given day, anybody is beating anybody, and there's no transitive property that relates to ACC basketball this year. Absolutely. Don't get caught slipping. That's for sure. Finally, want to talk about Carolina, as you had mentioned, coming off a big win against Boston College and Notre Dame not having the chance to play due to postponement, but they're ready to go. That's the team that you can never take, you know, for granted. You always have to be on your P's and Q's. And I think a North Carolina team can't rest on a big Boston College when they have to figure out how to add wins on top of wins. Please, please, guys. All I'm asking is just like, don't get too rested in the fact that you dumped on Boston College. That's not one to hang your hat on. I think we got to keep some of these rolling. No, for sure. I'm so excited to to watch this game uh, because, like I said, North Carolina is starting to figure it out. They absolutely dominated Boston College over the week. Candace, they were winning by nearly 30. It was 29 <laughs> point margin at halftime. Like it was within ugly. 20 minutes, you already knew the game was over. This North Carolina team is starting to figure it out, and Notre Dame has been so up and down and inconsistent. They beat a team. Here, here's kind of that transitive property magic that we've been talking about, right? North Carolina's terrible game this year was their trip out to Las Vegas to play Kentucky. Yeah. That was as ugly as it gets. <laughs> that was horrible yes. for North Carolina. What does Notre Dame do? They beat Kentucky. Of course. Right? Like, Because that makes sense. Absolutely. So who, who's going to win this game? I don't know. That's why we're going to have to be tuned in to find out. But I tell you what, North Carolina has to be thrilled with the way Caleb Love's been playing this season. You and I have always endorsed his Instagram, right? The dude's just like (laughs) at Caleb on Instagram to himself and always puts so much thought into those captions that he puts out there to the world. His play is now stepping up, and I know the Instagram game's going to start picking up as well for Caleb Love. So as he goes, the Tar Heels go, and he's been playing well lately. No doubt. It's nice to see Armando Baycott as well step up to that big man position that we've been looking for. He doesn't go missing necessarily in games that we've seen in the past. And then also with the Boston College game, it was nice to see Huber Davis you know, expand that rotation. Finally saw DeMar- DeMarco Dunn. He finally saw Dontre style in the rotation. I hope they don't have to always go up by 40 to get some of the young yeah. guys some play. <laughs> yeah, no, for real. You want to be sure to get those guys in a little bit earlier, but it was good to see them. A hundred percent, no doubt. So that's how we have the setup here for Tuesday, tonight here and Wednesday, tomorrow action. Make sure you guys follow at Locked on ACC to get all the updates. Follow the Blue Devils and Locked on Blue Devils, everything that JJ has covered there. Can you please remind folks of where they can find any more of your work? Yeah, Locked on Blue Devils is available wherever you get your podcast. You can follow me on Twitter at underscore JJ underscore Jackson underscore. Be sure to follow us on Twitter as well at LO underscore Blue Devils. Loved it, Candace. This was a great first episode for us in 2022, and uh, we're going to keep running it throughout this uh, new year. 
I mean, we're picking up right where we left off. We always have a good time. Always have great talk when it comes to hoops with JJ. So make sure you guys follow him personally. You see his name underneath there on the screen. If you're watching on YouTube, you can follow us on Twitter as well. Listen, subscribe to the channel. If you don't yet and you're ready to get into some of these games from a betting perspective, get your lock of the day with Locked on Bets podcast. You can follow your boy Q. And you can also follow Lee Sterling. They are the experts here that can always get you locked and loaded. So don't forget to do that. And as we say here, there's plenty of other teams in the conference that we want you to make sure you follow. So if you're a Pitt fan, a Louisville fan, if you're looking forward to being a host with Miami or Clemson, hit me up because I would always love to have more people join the show, Virginia, Virginia Tech. We're looking for new hosts to keep the conference afloat. We're trying to make sure everyone has a home here as we head into the fall for football. I want every single school to be represented. So make sure you guys hit me up at the uh, handle here on the bottom. And for Candace Cooper and JJ Jackson, until next time.